Hi, my name is Pastor Dave Holmes and welcome to Leicester City Elim's YouTube channel. You know, we uh, sing a lot in church. <laughs> or maybe we used to, just at the moment. It's a challenge, isn't it? But, um, you know, when we sing some of our songs, I, I love singing that song. How great is our God. Won't you sing with me, how great is our God. You know, I love to sing it because it, it, it expands my thinking of God. In my mind, you know, I'm very pictorial in the way that I uh, see things. And so I begin to expand my thinking when I, when I try and say, how great is our God, because... It's not possible, is it, to limit who God is. It's not possible to put boundaries on who God is in our life. You know, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 12, it says, Who else has held the oceans in his hand? Think about that. Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? <laughs> it says that God has measured off the heavens with his fingers. You know, just just a stretch of his of his thumb and his forefinger measures the heavens. Can you imagine how great God is when uh, Isaiah begins to try and paint that picture in our mind of, of the vastness of God? You know, the word of God says that our God is all powerful. He's all seeing, he's all knowing. He's infinite in every aspect of who he is. His love is never ending. His grace, his mercy. And yet he is a God of justice and requires justice. And yet, of course, he has provided grace and mercy for us as a way back through Jesus to be in relationship with the Father. How vast is God when you think of him? You know, I have said many times that... Um, the image that we have of God is the very thing that limits who he is. You know, one of the things that quite often the children of Israel did, and, uh, and in the New Testament we are warned many times not to create an image of who God is. Because that's idolatry, isn't it? When we bring God down to an image that we can understand... We have created God in our image. We have created God in an image of our understanding to be able to try and um, get a hold of God. But the minute that we do that, we begin to limit who God is. And, and yet God is unlimited in every aspect of who he is. Is there anything that is too hard for God to do, the word of God says? The reply comes, there is nothing too hard for God to do. You know, I'm very challenged constantly in my life that my thoughts <laughs> have the capacity to limit God. And my challenge is this, Lord. Lord, cause my thoughts to come in line with your thoughts. Cause my ways to come in line with with your ways, because your thoughts are higher, your ways are better than my thoughts. His wisdom far surpasses any wisdom that we might ever attain to. You see, the Word of God says that if we lack wisdom, let us come unto him and ask. And he will give it liberally to us. Wisdom. Wow, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Wisdom 
is one of those things that is awesome. It unlocks a situation. Have you ever been in the presence of somebody that gives you a wise word? You sit there and you think, mm, yeah, that unlocks that situation and that circumstance that I've been in. God is infinite in his wisdom. You know, let's come unto him who is wisdom. You know, I'm challenged not to limit God in who he is, in the operation of who God is. You know, just the other day, um, I was talking to a lady. Uh, I don't know her, other than she was there just to help in, in some aspect that was taking place in one of the uh, members of our church. And I began to chat to her and ask her about a family. Have you got family? She says, no, we don't have family, although we are trying for family. And I asked her and I said, how long have you been trying? She says, well, three years. I'm conscious that I don't want to limit God. I said to her, is it all right if I pray for you? I'd already told her who I was. <laughs> and uh, and she said, yeah, I'd like that. And so simply there in the middle of a, uh, of a kitchen, I just began to pray that God would provide for her, that God would open a womb, that God would give them a child. Why? Because I don't want to limit God. But I want to walk into that faith space with God. <laughs> you know, it's an incredible place to walk into. It's outside of us. I can't. What could I do? I couldn't do anything in the way of bringing a child to that woman. But I do know one who could. I do know one who many times in the word of God where it says that he, he opened the wombs of barren women. And provided a child. And my words were to her when she left. Come and let me know when you're pregnant. She says, I'll come and find you out. <laughs> I'm waiting with expectancy already. You know, how great is our God. How great is our God. He's unlimited in all his ways. You know, the hymn writer wrote this. He said, could we with ink the ocean fill? And where the skies are parchment made, where every stalk on earth a quill, and every man a scribe by trade, to write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from, from sky to sky. How great is our God? How great is your God? You know, you have heard me say many times, those people who know their God shall do exploits. I'm on a journey to increasingly become aware that my God is limitless <laughs> and therefore has no bounds. My God is... I hope is your God. Yeah. You know, and he's the same God yesterday, today and forever. You know, when we read of the miracles that God did in the Old Testament, when we see the miracles that God did in the New Testament, if the word of God be true, then the God of yesterday, today and forever is the God of the miraculous today. Let's reach out to him, shall we? Into the miraculous, wonderful, unlimited God. Have a great day. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.